matter of time. It is truly a matter of time that as a society, we reconsider how we use Mini G today. As we all know, we are very heavily relying today on fossil fuels to power our economy, our homes, our cars. We consume vast amounts of fossil fuels. For example, oil for transportation, natural gas, and coal for electric power generation. These fossil fuels are of limited supply. We will eventually run out of them, or at least we'll have depleted them to a level where they're scarce enough that they'll be impossibly expensive. At the same time, more and more people worldwide are gaining better access to energy. They're rightly and understandably so, improving their standards of living, and therefore we will consume even more energy in the future. Consuming fossil fuels, or more precisely, I should say, burning fossil fuels, we are polluting and poisoning the environment. We are emitting vast amounts of climate changing gases in the atmosphere, and we are causing destruction to the environment and the earth that is potentially irreversible. So how did we get here? How did we get to this situation? Or how, in other words, have we as a society, as mankind, not come up with a better, a more sustainable solution to fulfill our energy needs? Well, obviously, there are a multitude of reasons how we got into this situation. In this short talk, I can only focus on one single aspect of energy. But in reality, of course, there are many, many other aspects in this broad topic of energy that are just as important. There are many possible approaches that we can take to improve the situation and get out of the current situation that we are in here. I don't believe that one single approach is going to be sufficient that can solve all our problems that we have with this essential human energy crisis. So the one aspect that I want to talk about today here is the size of energy systems. Or more precisely, how we as individuals can benefit from using smaller, small scale, decentralized power generation systems. Now traditionally, power plants we are converting fossil fuels like oil, natural gas, and coal, as well as nuclear fuels to electricity. They tend to be very large. It's economics. The economy of scale says that the larger you build a power plant, generally, the more profitable it's going to be. But it is not only economics. It is about physics. Today, most of our power generation systems, as well as transportation systems, are mostly mechanical systems. That means they rely heavily on moving machine parts. These machine parts in engines, turbines, pumps, when they are rotating, when they're moving, they're rubbing on each other. They're generating heat due to friction. This friction we're gonna feel as an energy loss in our system, as a reduction of our energy efficiency of these systems. Now physics says that the larger a system is, the relatively smaller these friction losses are going to be. So that means building many mini power plants is not only more expensive, less profitable, it is as well less efficient. And less efficient means we'd have to consume even more fossil fuels if we built a lot of mini power plants instead of just very few, very large power plants. Now this technical reason for large power plants has been exacerbated by politics and by the actions of large corporations. Big power plants like the one you can see here are very expensive. They cost billions of dollars. No individual homeowner, individual power consumer, or locality, community, neighborhood can afford that. Only very, very large corporations can afford this kind of investment. That has led us to a situation where there are very few, very large players in the energy market, the electricity market, the utility market. For example, when I moved to North Carolina, to Durham, about 10 years ago, my apartment building in downtown was only serviced by one single electricity company. Duke Energy. They're producing around 90% of all the electricity in the state of North Carolina, similar values in a few other states. They have a monopoly or near monopoly, and that is very common in the energy market. So unless I, if I wanted to live in a dark and cold apartment, I had to get my electricity through them. I had no other choice. I had no alternative. So how can we as individuals, as individual power consumer, take power into our own hands? How can we change the current energy infrastructure and get to a more renewable, a more sustainable energy future against the inertia coming from politics and large corporations that have no interest in changing this at the moment. Now there's some good news coming from science and technology. There are more new technologies starting to get to the market level and that we can hopefully use in the near future. But maybe more importantly, already today, 
there are well-known, so years-known technologies that have improved over the last years in performance, while at the same time decreased in cost. For example, solar cells. Photovoltaic cells made of silicon are not new. They have been around for a while. But over the last decade or so, they have improved in performance while decreased in cost. Today, they're cheap enough that a significant portion of the population in a country like the US or other developed countries can afford putting one or multitude of them onto their house to produce electricity on their own. Lithium-ion batteries have improved in electricity energy storage capacity while at the same time decreased in cost over the last years, making electric, meaning battery power cars, a real viable alternative to cars that are powered by internal combustion engines. Now, all these technologies that I just mentioned here, added on top of those new things like hydrogen, biogas as alternative fuels, combined heat and power cycles, uh, as well as fuel cells, uh, just to name a few that are very efficient power generators, electricity generators, all of these new technologies have one thing in common. They're not as much mechanical systems as our traditional old power generation systems. That means they don't rely as much on moving machine parts. That means they're not as much affected by friction. And therefore, I can scale them down in size without losing in efficiency, as I would with a conventional power generation. So that means I can operate at basically the same efficiency, one single solar cell or multiple solar cells on top of your house, the same efficiency as many thousands of solar devices in large solar farms. It means that the powertrain efficiency for a car, truck, or any other vehicle is not much affected in terms of its efficiency by the size of the vehicle. A small, lightweight, compact car like this one here, powered by a battery or a fuel cell, is operating at about the same efficiency as a large, heavy truck. So that means these technologies allow us to scale on the size without losing efficiency, without needing more energy input, to a size where we can afford them. We can afford to buy, install, and operate them as individuals, as individual power users, power consumers, as homeowners, as community leaders, as neighborhoods. And that means that we can produce our own electricity to some degree. We do not rely completely on large corporations to supply us with our power. Now, all of this trend is not new. As already said, electric cars and solar cells have been on for some time. But over the last years, especially last decade, the cost has decreased and the performance has improved. And therefore, we're using more and more of them. I believe this trend is going to continue. We're going to use more electric cars, more solar cells, and then adding on hydrogen, fuel cells, and maybe many other things. We're going to increase the amount of decentralized power generation in the US and in many other countries. Already in 2012, the total electric energy generation capacity of so-called distributed or decentralized systems in the US was about one-sixth of the total electric energy generation capacity of centralized systems, meaning large power plants. This number is going to increase. Some studies predict that by between 2020 and 2026, the amount of electricity generated through decentralized power generation systems is going to increase by a factor of five times. By 2030, up to a quarter of all electricity in the US might be generated by systems like this one here, where in an individual home, in a house, different decentralized power generation systems, solar, wind, electric cars, electric uh, energy storage systems, and many others combined produce and store our own electricity. It could be in an individual home, it could be in an apartment or commercial building, it could be in an office building, in an entire neighborhood or a whole community. With this, we can take power into our own hands. We can produce our own power. We can rely less. We have to rely less on large corporations to provide us with electricity. And in this context, I have to add as well a comment on resilience. If you have read the news or watched the news this week, you know that this week, large winter storms have hit big parts of the US, especially in the south and central US. Large parts of the electric grid in many states has been temporarily wiped out, even in the energy state of Texas. Millions of people were without power, hardly for days, even until today. Using more decentralized power generation will make our energy system more resilient. We will be less vulnerable towards such extreme weather events. So to conclude, I believe decentralized power generation 
is going to play a much bigger role in the future. I think it will be an important part of our future uh, energy portfolio. Technology is giving us here a really important, really strong tool in our hands that allows us to produce affordably, resiliently, and in small scale electricity on our own. We are less dependent on large corporations. However, the main work is still up for us to do. Against the lack of interest for drastic change coming from politics and from large corporations, we have to take matters into our own hands as individuals. As individual power consumers, as homeowners, renters, landlords, as students and teachers, as voters, we have to get better educated on energy topics. We have to put pressure on politics for change. And we have to take maybe our own money into our hands and invest in our own solutions. Maybe it is a matter of time that we all start to build our own small power plants at home. Thank you. Thank you.